Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the crazy to happen in running this week. This week's stories include Ryan Hall's last marathon, Bolt loses his gold, and Leadville slams down the Grand Slam. This is officially episode 26 of Mountain Outhouse. That means we've come at you with arguably the best and greatest ultra running related news now for a straight half a year without missing a single week. Really, really appreciate it. It's very special. Now, Milton, don't be greedy. Let's pass it along and make sure everyone gets a piece. Hey, but last time I didn't receive a piece. Don't worry, we're just getting started. Buckle up, this week's a doozy. Folks, he's done it. T-Mobile's new media darling, Michael Wardian, absolutely dominated the World Marathon Challenge by winning and going sub three hours in all of his seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. In this impromptu interview after his win in Sydney, he expresses his disappointment by missing a 245 per marathon average. Um, so you have just finished. I sent your time to Megan, nice. but they just wanted your time so they could average it. Oh, cool. And work out what your average was for the, the week of uh, crazy. I think it was probably a little over 245. I was hoping to bring it da average down, but man, there's some hot races, some 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 challenges, but yeah, it was it was solid, man. I'm not sure if I'm more jealous of his times or some of the food he was eating out there in Dubai. Mmm. -mm. Our kudos of the week go to Ryan Hall for battling out a 180-mile week and also finishing the World Marathon Challenge. The American record holder at the distance, with a personal best of 204, ran his fastest on the trip in Morocco of 304 but his final leg in Sydney was a legit ultra shuffle death march. In his pre-race video blog posted to his Instagram, he officially bid goodbye to the marathon distance. And uh, this is gonna be a special one for me, you know, with the way things ended in my professional career, I never got to say a proper farewell to, to the marathon distance, and this will be that. Um, you know, I came into the sport with a, a super epic 15 mile run around the lake my hometown was 13 and now I'm 34 I'm going out with seven marathons and seven days and seven continents and confirmed that fact while posting another video blog at mile 23 you gotta be willing to accept the good days with the bad days as my dad always says so I'm, uh, I'm grateful for everything good ones and the bad ones and uh, grateful for, to the marathon but happy to say goodbye and move on to new things all right see you guys soon. Ryan ran walked a 515 for the final marathon distance race of his career, clearly savoring every last moment. I'd like to be the first in the ultra community to officially welcome Ryan to the sport of ultra running. Now that he has graduated from the marathon distance, we are excited to welcome Ryan with open arms. We are anxious to see which ultra Ryan chooses as his first. It was brought to our attention a competing seven marathons, seven days, seven continents challenge is also still underway, but traveling in the opposite direction. The triple seven quest began in Australia and is currently on day six. This one has much less information on who is competing. And by that, I mean no information. They haven't tweeted since 2014 and the only posts on their Facebook page have to do with the weather and where the athletes are headed next. Does anyone have results for this race? One thing that strikes me odd on this one is that Antarctica is last. I'm with the understanding that weather-wise, this is the most risky, meaning those who pay for the 777 quest might be duped out of their seven-day time limit because of a bad weather window. Ouch. A thief is stealing from the Barkley. According to a post by Laz himself, a dude on eBay is selling Barkley DNF bumper stickers not sanctioned by the storied race. Laz is pissed and calls out this bastard for being a leech. So if you see Barkley paraphernalia on eBay, don't buy. Usain Bolt lost his 2008 4x100 meter relay gold this past week in the latest doping scandal to hit the running airwaves. It was his teammate Nesta Carter who was disqualified for testing positive for methylexanhamine, a known stimulant. It was reportedly in a supplement given to the sprinter by his coach. Interesting thing is that Methylexahemine wasn't on the banned substance list in 2008, but retroactively applied since it achieves a similar effect to other banned stimulants. This stimulant was in the marketplace from 1944 until 1983 when it was voluntarily removed by the manufacturer. It was reintroduced in 2006, formulated in some fat-burning supplements by Patrick Arnold. 
The same year, he served a three-month jail sentence for the Balco scandal, which involved the use of PEDs in professional athletes. Idiot. The fake Twitter handle explosion in the ultra world has broken free and hit the mainstream as seen this past week. Rogue governmental agency Twitter accounts have been popping up across the country. Fueled by the censorship of the National Park Service and inspired by Badlands National Park going rogue, we now can follow them on their own independent accounts. My next question is, will we see rogue ultramarathon races popping up in national parks soon? How will these rogue Twitter accounts respond? As companies continue to grow larger in the obstacle course racing scene, has one group gone too far? Pro racer Amelia Boone asks this week in her response to Spartan Race's new policy regarding prize money payouts, According to their general rules and athlete conduct, in order to be eligible, one must wear a Spartan branded head wrap the entire race and pose on the podium wearing a Spartan shirt or a shirt of Spartans choosing. This could conflict with an athlete's own sponsorships. Boone cites her love of OCR as a sport and wants to promote all of the sport, not just one brand she races in. My bigger issue with Spartan? When they came to Phoenix and decided to bulldoze into the desert and run competitors off trail all over McDowell Mountain Regional Park. Not a fan. A 19-year-old Phoenix man was found in Crown King after being missing for four days. He was last seen near Lake Pleasant, the starting line for the Crown King Scramble 50K, in his 2005 black Dodge Ram pickup which reportedly was not in Crown King with him. I'm guessing he tried to drive his truck up the back way, the same route as our Scramble 50K, and somewhere along the way couldn't make it. He DNF'd his truck and finished the haul to Crown King on foot. The Grand Slam of Ultra Running was conceived by Fred Pylon of Ultra Running Magazine back in 1985 and pitched to the race director of the Wasatch 100. The idea was to become an official finisher of the four oldest 100-mile trail runs in the U.S. in one year. At the time, they were Western States, Old Dominion, Leadville, and Wasatch Front. The slam has changed a few times over the years, and it might be due for another. Vermont was added in 1989 when it began as an alternate to Old Dominion, and OD was completely removed in 2003. In 2008, when Western States was canceled due to fire, Arkansas Traveler became the fourth race. With Western States being notoriously difficult to get into, the other three races have typically allowed slammers to run as long as they are still alive and finish each event along the way, even if they have filled to capacity. Not anymore. Leadville recently announced that beginning with the 2018 event, there will be zero preferential treatment given to slammers, according to RD Paul Anderson of Lifetime Fitness. It is a little unclear from an article written by Trail Runner Magazine but it sounds like former RD, Ken Clauber, who has recently come back on board with a larger role with Lifetime Fitness, heard about the preferential treatment of these hopeful slammers and slammed the door on their dreams. He doesn't think it's right and was quoted as saying, it's not gonna happen anymore. Leadville suggests coming to volunteer to earn more weight in their lottery or going for one of their charity slots if you're interested in the Grand Slam. If you don't like this policy, I might suggest checking out the no less than 38 other slams currently listed on the run100s.com website. Take the All-American Mountain Slam, for instance, which consists of Massanutten, Bighorn, and Hard Rock, plus one of the three, Wasatch, Angeles Crest, or Bear, in one summer. Or how about the Larry Slam, Western States, Tahoe Rim Trail, Cascade, and Pine de Palm. Or if you are really feeling frisky, the HRQ Super Slam, which no one has even done yet. Just do all the Hard Rock qualifiers in one year. Boom, famous, roasted, donezo. A no-dope clean sport update. I've been off caffeine now for two weeks, and I might have just started turning the corner. It's been rough, but I'm pushing through for the greater cause. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. If you have crazy stories to share, or have come up with a slam of your own, tweet us, at Mountain Outpost. Have a sh** week.